Hi, welcome back to episode two. We're going to continue our discussion about fathering and fatherhood. I wanted to share something with you. Um, There's an author, his name is John Bishop, and I think it was about 2000. He succinctly described the fallout of the recent and pervasive dynamic of father absence. And what he explained was that when children live in single parent households versus the two parent households with the mother and the father, uh, their lives tend to have greater negative outcomes than uh, what happens when children have two parents in the household. And so what he pointed out was that those children experience problems, including deficits in things like thinking and social skills. And those children tend to have significant behavioral problems. Now, this is in addition to the children experiencing underlying psychological issues. Um, When children are not raised in households with both of their parents, Um, There are sometimes issues of things like, as you can imagine, resentment, where the child is resenting either one or both of the parents. Uh, Often the child feels anger, the child may feel a sense of shame and have all sorts of issues related to attachment and uh, just a deep internal sense of suffering. Sometimes there are issues with aggression, whether we're talking about in the home or in the school. And then there are often sexual identity issues. Now, when this happens where the child is raised in a single parent household where one parent is absent, there's often a lack of a dependable and nurturing father. And what the author Bishop talked about also was that um, this absence of a dependable and nurturing father leads to a child having a sense of hardship and just a general sense of agony. Um, Now, what often happens is, is that much of the child's misery that they're having, it can be alleviated by legally maintaining the presence and involvement of the fathers in the lives of the children, or either by reconnecting some of the estranged fathers with the children through some effective custody or visitation planning and decision making like we talked about in the first video. Now, so to to do this though, courts, fathers, mothers, legal professionals, child specialists, they all need to come to grips with the necessity of fathers. It, It really comes down to that. It really comes down to those entities understanding and believing and and fully embracing the importance and necessity of fathers in the lives of children. And those entities also need to take seriously the fallout that results from the absence of fathers in the lives of children. And so what this basically means is that um, in custody situations, uh, in situations where we're talking about visitation or talking about child support, fathers should never be given the legal option to opt out of their child's life. Okay, so that should not be an option. Okay, so um, there are a lot of reasons for that. Uh, Often uh, fathers are just ignored in those situations. If, you know, there's a situation where they're paying child support, the issue of custody might not be a big deal. Um, in the eyes of the mother or the father, the father might think he's, he's doing his duty by paying this child support. The mother might feel like the father's doing his duty by paying the child support and that becomes the end of it. And then the father sometimes just sort of opts out. Um, but every day children are waking up to lives without their fathers and every day children live with the pain of the absence of the father. When the father is absent, there is an 
absence of love. There is an absence of guidance. There is an absence of protection and nurturance and someone to teach them and correct them and support them the way that a father does. Every day, millions of children around the world are living with that tragic void from the father's lack of presence in their lives. And these children, they have a sense often, uh, an, an enduring sense of aloneness, of abandonment, as you can imagine, of rejection. Their sense of self-worth and self-value is compromised when the father is absent. And one of the things that exacerbates this is when they look at and see that they have peers who have active and involved fathers in their lives. And they see that and they do sort of a comparison and contrast with their own lives. And that, that's what the little people do. That's what the children will do. And they, they will sometimes ask themselves. They might not ask the adults, but they might ask themselves, you know, why are they not loved? What did they do wrong to push the father away? What is it that they can do to acquire the father's love and concern? These are some of the questions that children ask. And these questions don't stop after childhood. Many times adults carry these questions on into adulthood. And one of the things that plagues a lot of children is this question. Why are their fathers spending time with children that don't belong to the father? instead of with them. Sometimes they ask the question of why later born children by other mothers, not their mother, but by other mothers seem to be a little bit more important than they are. That's a very good question. Sometimes they ask themselves, Will they ever truly be loved by the father? And by extension, anyone. See, if the children could speak for themselves, they would say to the father, if they could be honest, if they could speak heart to heart to the father, their hearts would say, please don't leave me. Please take care of me. Please talk to me. Please call me. Visit me. Please feed me. Please change my diaper. Please hold me. Protect me. Encourage me. Accept me. Love me. If their little hearts could speak heart to heart with that father, their hearts would say, Without you, my life is going to be so much more difficult, so empty, and so hard. Their little hearts would say, I'm going to miss you. I'm going to miss us. I'm going to miss seeing me in you and you in me. See, if the children were allowed to speak their heart's longings, their needs and their desires in relationship to their absent fathers, these would be some of the words that their hearts would say. Now, a lot of times uh, adults don't get it. Adults see the world through these adult lenses. They don't often consider what it looks like through the eyes of a child, through the eyes of their child. And so adults, parents will often get caught up in their own relational issues, their own dramas with the other parent. They'll often get caught up with being stuck in their own childhood stuff that they haven't fully processed in dealing with their own child and their own child's issues 
with the parent. Okay. And so when this happens, these parents will often neglect what's going on with the child. And they may not even pay attention to the fact that while they're busy exercising their choices and their freedoms in life to do what they want to do with their lives, they forget that what they are doing is having an impact on the children. And the impact is often negative when it's related to parental absence. And one of the things that happens in this situation is, is that the parents will just uh, rewrite reality. They'll come up with another story to explain what's going on for the child. In these instances, you'll have sometimes upset mothers and they'll convince themselves that because they no longer need the father or they no longer want to be with the father or they feel that the father no longer wants to be with them and the father no longer needs them then neither does the child need the father in the mother's mind. And similarly, fathers will collude in some of these fictions. And in their anger and confusion and sometimes immaturity, they will collude in this dynamic with the mother by determining, convincing themselves that the child doesn't need them, that the child doesn't need the father around, that the father's presence and involvement, that it's just, those things are just unnecessary, that the father has no true role in the child's life that can't be filled by a mother or a grandparent or the mother's boyfriend or a stepfather or the government, um, you know, anybody that could just step in and fulfill the father's role. And, and when this happens, I'm, I'm going to touch on this because this is very important. When this happens, sometimes it's out of the father's selfishness. Sometimes it's out of a lack of empathy for what the child is going through. Oftentimes, however, it's about the father's own sense of low self-esteem and low sense of self-worth. When someone believes that their existence, what they have to offer, is of no consequence, that usually comes from a space of not seeing oneself as valuable of value in that situation. Sometimes, however, it does come from a, pa- a space of really deep selfishness. And for some men, if they no longer love the mother, they believe that they no longer have to love the child that they have with the mother. And so it's like whatever woman they are with that's where their love goes and they may take that love from their actual biological child and transfer it to children by whatever woman they happen to be with. This can also happen with women, by the way, um, where when they are with a man that is not the father of that child, they don't have as much love outpouring for that child. And one of the other things that happens that's going on for some parents is that if either one of those parents, the mother or the father, endured living in a father absent household, if they endured having an absent father in their life, then those individuals will tend to believe that the father's presence is not that important or that you can live without it. In fact, 
many people grew up without ever knowing their father because the father may have either walked out, walked away, or the mother didn't support the father and child bonding and relationship. Some children have grown up and they have no knowledge of who their father is at all. And and this man may have even lived in the same city the entire time this child was growing up. But the parents may have convinced themselves or one of the parents may have convinced himself or herself that things turned out just fine for them when they grew up with no father. So their child can grow up just fine without a father around. The question is, however, did they really grow up just fine? And the likelihood is that there is something missing. That they could be a little bit more complete. Now, one of the problems when women take on this legacy of self-sufficiency in terms of you know, taking on the role of the mother and trying to compensate for the absent father. Um, these mothers and these grandmothers struggle, but because they managed to provide everything that they thought they needed, they sometimes convince themselves that the family was a healthy functioning unit, as healthy and as functioning as it could have been and would have been had the father been there. And, and what's happening is these adults are basically blinded. They're blinded and they're fairly delusional about what is really going on. And sometimes anger fuels this. And that anger turns into sour grapes. And that sour grapes, it, it, it doesn't turn into grape juice. Um, you know, they talk themselves into believing that if they didn't have a father, they didn't either need one or they didn't desire one. But if these parents, both the mothers and the fathers who grew up without a father, if they were more honest with themselves regarding the harm that they endured without their fathers, they could be equally honest about the importance of the father and child relationship for their own children. But people are often dishonest about emotions and dishonest about relationships. But it is imperative that adults start to open their eyes to the truth of father absence. And when they do, they will allow families societies, communities to comprehend the need of active father involvement in the lives of children. If you don't remember anything else, I want you to remember this. Children are in fact the future. They're not only their future, they are our future. And the brighter the current lives of the children, the brighter the collective futures will be for all people. Remember, knowledge is power. We'll be back with episode three. See you soon.